Well, good morning. Uh, I'm, really, I'm really excited to be here and, and see how much uh, Bright Edge and really the SD industry as a whole has grown. Uh, I, as Paul pointed out, I started off at Microsoft as an in-house SEO and working on site search features for Office.com and later to uh, Windows.com before moving to Bing.com. Um, and um, so back in those days, it was really hard to kind of have a structured SEO program. We see a lot of people talk about these things in a much more professional and much more uh, scalable way uh, these days. Back in the day, basically what we have was uh, what were the webmaster tools. And that's basically almost everything that we, that we uh, use to kind of see how we made progress and so on. So it's really great to see these things. So, um, but what I wanted to start off with today is really um, Bing. Why should you care about Bing? Now, everybody talks about Google. Google is obviously the big 800-pound gorilla of search and an undeniable factor in whatever uh, search marketing you do. But I think it's, um, it's, it's paramount to also think beyond Google because um, there, you know, you know, Bing is, is uh, growing as we go along. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then, obviously, why would you care about the product that I built, the Bing Webmaster Tools, uh, in your uh, SEO strategy as part of all the other things that you already have to do and you're working with your digital suites and all these other things? So I want to talk a little bit about, especially about the features that Webmaster Tools have that may help you survive some disastrous things in SEO or that help you just uh, do things that you cannot do in any other uh, digital marketing suite that you are using today. So Bing. Obviously, Bing.com is kind of the prime destination, and, and Bing.com has been growing uh, from kind of an underdog when we, when we rebranded the live search to Bing.com and started off at maybe 8 9% market share, uh, and, and we're growing this as we, as we go along. But Bing.com is not the only place that is powered by Bing, and as a result, it's powered by the Bing index, and the web messages will give you access to stuff in that index. So really what you need to think about a Bing is not just Bing.com, it's also everything around Yahoo. Uh, so all of the Yahoo searches, uh, barring one or two countries uh, that they operate in, is powered by the Bing Index. I'm part of the Index and Knowledge team over at Bing, so the Webmaster Tools kind of right in that team that runs the Index, uh, the Web Index, uh, as well as the Knowledge Graph, or the Knowledge Index, which we call Satori. Um, so when you really think about the tools and interacting with Bing, you need, you're not interacting just with Bing.com's output and all the other local flavors of Bing. You're also talking about Yahoo and all the local flavors of Yahoo, uh, barring a few. And in July, basically, these two properties together, just the web search properties, uh, accounted for 29.2% of the total US um, uh, explicit searches. So that's about 20 billion searches, roughly, um, uh, in, in total. And about a third of that is uh, owned by the Microsoft properties and by Yahoo. So, you can basically say one out of three people use uh, either Bing or Yara, or at least use the Bing index to do their searches. So kind of that puts it in perspective where you want to place this, one out of three. And a lot of these people do not use Google. So if your strategy is only to look for Google, and a lot of people do because you know, there's a lot of work that has to be done, uh, you might be uh, leaving a lot of other people in the cold. And if you're not checking whether or not you're, you're doing well in those properties, you might be leaving some, uh, some money on the table. So that's important. Yeah, and I think if between the two, I think Bing is now at, at an all-time high of 17.9%, which is a 2 point percent point increase over a year. So, and we work really hard to do that. And, uh, and, we're, and we're really proud to kind of, you know, getting there, um, uh, up, up there. But Bing.com, Yahoo.com is not all that the Bing index powers. The index is really a, an asset that's used in several places. So what else is there? Well, we've all you know, heard about Facebook's uh, new graph search. Uh, and they're doing really great in expanding that. And it's kind of a really cool feature. And I think that's something what, that will expand in their end more and more. But obviously, there's also web search right uh, embedded within Facebook. Yeah, and those 185 million people that come to daily just in the US will see a lot of search results right there in Facebook. And all of the web searches, as you can tell from the little logo in the corner, are also driven by the Bing Index. So that really you know, brings it, again, in a whole different light. If you're thinking about Bing, it's not just Bing.com and looking at your traffic stats there and making conclusions about where to invest just based on that. You also need to think about all these other places. And recently, we announced that Siri uh, will start using Bing 
to do the web search for them as well, especially in an image search and, and all the, the, uh, the, the web graph that just kind of you know, covers the tail that they don't have specific Siri answers for. So that's really an exciting thing. Um, Bing.com, Yahoo, uh, Facebook, Siri in the next uh, iOS 7. Um, and then I think, in my mind, what is going to be a really uh, important thing to think about is smart search in Windows 8.1. In Windows 8, there was always some search integration. And obviously, you've heard about Windows 8 and, and how it kind of addresses the tablet market. Uh, and smart search is really the next generation of search that's r right there within Windows. And Bing powers all these answers that come up. So two things, the web search index uh, you know, covers all the web results. And our knowledge graph, or Satori, does this kind of you know, these, these beautiful, what they call hero answers that are in there. So you, you're gonna, it's going to be a much more visual search. People are going to use it. We know that people use the search charm a lot in Windows 8. And Bing will power the results that, that are right there within uh, people's Windows clients. So that's really important. We, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So now, having set that context, why would you want to use Bing Webmaster Tools, especially if you're already very busy working in your other digital marketing suites? You know, and we kind of compete for time. A lot of people tell me, hey, really love the stuff you're doing, but I'm always, you know, I have to go here, and I have to go to Google Webmaster Tools, and I have to go Bing Webmaster Tools. And that's correct. And that's definitely something that we want to kind of optimize for in the future. Uh, and we, we will start having some conversations with the, the, the marketing suites about you know, starting a dialogue about how we can integrate some of these things. The main reason to use Webmaster Tools is really because it, it is the place to provide data about your website to us, just to help us understand you better. Yeah, we do a fairly good job about figuring out how your site works, what, what the URL structures are, what's important, what's less important, what to crawl and what not to crawl. But the Webmaster Tools really give you uh, some control over that. So that's the place to go. And you, you know, there's some essential things that you just need to do. Also, we will give you data of how your site is performing right there, not through scrapes or all kinds of API calls. No, we give you the data right there from our back end. So you can you know, kind of compare that with some of the data that you're getting from, from, uh, from, from, uh, from other places. So that's, that's an important thing. And yes, there's no keyword not provided in Bing. So that's a good thing. So what we also do is give you some powerful tools to manage your visibility in the Bing index. And again, the Bing index is not just Bing.com. It's not the, kind of the, only that market share that we, that we talk about. It's all these other places, too. We'll talk about those. We give you some additional inputs for your SEO and your SEO strategy. Uh, we have some interesting tools there that are, that are free to use and that you can you know, employ in your overall SEO strategy. Um, really important also, we will keep you up to date about if we see issues on your site. So we will notify you if we see, hey, we cannot crawl your site all of a sudden, or there's an increase in, in, in server errors that you may not even know about. So th those are really important. And we send 11, 12 million of those notifications per month to people, yeah? And, and things like malware that we've discovered malware, nobody else will tell you until it's too late and you see it in the syrup and you get a malware warning. That's not something that you really want to uh, uh, see happening. So stay, stay um, informed. So basically, we also offer some webmaster help. And we, we have a, a, a webmaster help center uh, that we're kind of grow, building and growing out. And uh, people like myself and Dwayne Forrester, you might know, uh, kind of do the webmaster outreach, develop some of that content, and, and try to address some of the support questions that come in to, uh, to Bing. And, and those are many. A lot of webmasters use that free information. And you know, we see thousands of users on a, on a monthly basis come in and, and use that free documentation to, uh, to, to optimize uh, their success in uh, the Bing Index. So we will really focus on mostly on the features that you will not find in any other places. Yeah, we, have, we have tools that you, know, you could replicate that kind of information uh, in, in, in suites you're already using. We might just quickly look at them. But my focus is really now, what are the things that you cannot do anywhere else? OK. But uh, first of all, maybe just by a show of hands, who has ever logged into Bing Webmaster Tools? Oh, that's really good. Who does it on a monthly basis? Weekly? Very good. Daily? And you don't have to. That's the good thing. 
The webmaster tools are not a suite where you go to every day, but you go and get um, some of the fundamentals done, and then you move on. Uh, you go on with your business, and you really start focusing on content, because really, uh, you know, as we all know, and as we all find out, the content strategy is really, at the end of the day, what's going to make your, your site thrive. Um, and we will alert you if something's wrong. Yeah? So make sure you set up that forwarding email address in Bing Webmaster Tools so that we can reach you even uh, outside of your Microsoft ID or, or Windows Live ID, uh, whatever it is called today. So a couple of ways to, to do this. Uh, we won't go into that. If you haven't tried it before, go in, try it. Um, verify your site. There's a couple of ways to do this. Um, and within a day or two, you will start seeing all of the, the you know, we start uploading all that rich information about your site to, um, to the, your back, Bing Webmaster Tools account. Now, once signed up, basically what we do, we give you some, some basic overview about how your site is performing. So you will quickly see how many clicks from search you're getting in this period. And you can set the period from seven days to 30 days and three months and six months. So we give you up to six months worth of data. Um, uh, you see the clicks from search. You see you know, how many impressions you had. We call it a period in search. Um, how many pages we crawled, so kind of the technical details. Um, how many crawl errors we've seen. And I, I always, you know, I, we're going to leave this bug in, but every time you know, the crawl errors go down, we still make it red. So it's kind of a thing that uh, you know, has become a bit of a running gag, but l less is better. Yeah, fewer errors is better. Uh, how many pages we index. And that's something you really don't need to track on a daily basis. That's the kind of stuff you want to track, like, really, really where am I trending over time? Yeah, we, we don't want people to obsess about the day-to-day. -day. That's, that's kind of a different story. Uh, you want to see how you're trending over, let's say, a period of a month, two months, three months, and see how uh, your site is performing. If you see sudden drops in indexation, you know there's something wrong. If you see sudden spikes in indexation, you might be doing something well, or we might be picking up content you don't want uh, all of a sudden to have in the index. So that's kind of the, the, the dashboard functionality that we have. And then another fundamental feature, uh, and which of your sites employs XML sitemaps? Who's struggling with XML sitemaps in their CMSs? All right, if you, if you are, we do offer a, 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 a plugin that's creating sitemaps.org compliant um, um, sitemaps. Uh, I'm, I'm the, the Microsoft rep in sitemaps.org, so we built this tool for people to quickly generate uh, comprehensive and, and, and sitemaps based on the traffic that we see. So go check that out. And when we share the slides, the links are in there. Uh, it installs an IAS, and it's, it's open source, so you can see exactly what we're doing. And it also installs an Apache. And uh, uh, we use it internally, like uh, big sites that were traditionally kind of hard to crawl and index, like MSDN and TechNet and MSN are using these tools to generate their sitemaps today. OK? So definitely try to submit sitemaps through the webmaster tools. This has a couple of advantages over other methods, like robots.txt, advertising them in there. Uh, we kind of trust them a little bit more. We know who you are. We know that you're a verified user. We know all of these, these good things. So we, we will definitely be able to trust them a little bit more than, than when we see them from, from anywhere else. And also, through webmaster tools, you can submit Google video sitemaps. And you think, yes, of course you can. But yeah, we read this. The video sitemaps are kind of a proprietary extension of the sitemaps.org protocol. But if you submit video sitemaps through here, we will process them. And we will be able to use them in our video and multimedia index. So that's kind of uh, a differentiator. Yeah, as I said, a little bit more trust. Everything you do reading Webmaster Tools by verifying that you are the site owner gives us additional trust. So and then we can trust things, the inputs that you give us much more. So, but there's more inputs. That's kind of fundamental. You need to have your sitemaps comprehensive. And you need, if you are publishing a lot of stuff, set up an RSS feed with the latest 500. You know, kind of keep that rolling. That way, we can really uh, you know, come in and understand your site as best and crawl it. And th th these should be solved problems at this time. There's still a lot of sites that are struggling with, with, with this that, with, that we see. But even better, you can actually submit URLs directly to us. Yeah, so you can actually say, like, you know, up to a certain quota, because there are always some people on the web that kind of abuse some of these features. We need to kind of keep it. But you can submit 50 URLs a month directly into the index. And they will be processed within, let's say, one or two hours, and you will start showing up in the index. OK, so that's important. OK, some vetting going on. You have 50 chances at putting stuff in there. So if you're launching a new page and you want it to kind of be quick before we discover it through other means, Go to the Webmaster Tools, submit URL, click, and within a few hours, uh, or even sometimes even quicker, you will start seeing it uh, uh, in 
Bing.com, Yahoo, Facebook search, all of these places, okay? And then on the flip side, and this happens a lot, on the flip side, sometimes you might publish something and you have to take it out of, you know, take it down from the web. You know, once we have something in the index, we want to hold on to that because we love stuff. Uh, and users are clicking on it, so we don't want to, you know, get that experience uh, degraded. But sometimes you might have published something that contains personal information or that contains the wrong credits on the wrong article or that contains wrong information. And it happens a lot. And then all of a sudden, you know, the phone starts ringing in my end and people are asking, like, oh, could you please help us out? We lost our Bing Webmaster Tools password. Okay? So it's important to stay, you know, use this a lot. And there's whole companies that really use these features a lot, like, you know, that probably you know, do mug shots or stuff like that, and then people pay them to take it out. So, um, so the ability to quickly take something out of the index is just as important as to get something into the index. You don't want to re be remembered for, uh, you know, having credit card information, social security, um, wrong pricing, misinformation, uh, you know, crawled, and it's in the index, and now you're, you're stuck. So this will take a URL out of our index, and I'll have all the other indexes that we, all about the other places within, you know, two to four hours. Yeah. Okay. Now let's go back a little bit. What did we talk about this Windows 8.1 smart search? Windows 8.1 is going to launch sometime in the fall, October-ish, I, I believe. I, I'm not entirely sure. I used to work in Windows, but they don't tell me anything anymore. But what we know is that Bing will play an important role in that whole search experience. So when people search from right within their search charm, uh, they can you know, search all their files and their emails and whatnot. And that's handled by the Windows search functionality. But it's also augmented with everything that's on the web, so everything that comes out of Bing. Now, and we saw these big hero answers with, with the San Francisco Golden Gate, and that comes from kind of Satori, the, the knowledge graph uh, that Bing has. But if you look at regular web results, and here's an example for Amazing Registry as a site we'll, that we'll be using as, as an example. Let's see, do we have a point that we do? So you see basically that there's a whole new way of displaying search results here. So not only do you have your regular titles and your URL and your snippets, and your deep links over here, you also have these screenshots of your site showing up. So now all of a sudden, you, you, you're going to have to think about what I'm going to do to make these screenshots attractive as well. Because if you see, let's say, the third result here, gift registry, it kind of has a, a, a gray box there or stuff like that. So, so what we will do in Webmaster Tools and give you some more tools and kind of understanding how to optimize for that. But the first thing that we will do in Webmaster Tools to, you know, to help you out with not just titles and descriptions, but also with these, uh, these previews, which are probably going to influence your click-through rate, is allowing you to, when, it, when we get it terribly wrong or is something wrong, to, to block those. So um, again, this is something you will not be able to do anywhere else. Again, if you have to block one of these previews because there's something on that you don't want to be shown, you will have to go to the Bing Webmaster Tools. And I normally do not announce features ahead of time before releasing them, but this time I wanted to share that we will be building kind of a, a preview block tool for that and that, that you can use. So I think the preview functionality inside uh, Webmaster Tool, uh, sorry, inside the Windows Smart Shirt is definitely going to change the way you need to think about titles, descriptions, and just, you know, just the visual impact of your site is going to be right there in the SERP. OK, so that's, that's going to be, in many ways, I think, a game changer. So there, there might be whole new best practices around that that will emerge as, as, as Windows starts rolling out and, and being used by millions and millions of people. OK, does that make sense? All right. Another uh, really important thing that um, I think is really undervalued is how to normalize URLs. <laughs> We use a lot of tracking codes uh, on our URLs. We have a lot of, I call them barnacles, you know, stuff that just gets added uh, to, to the URLs as you know, people link to it in different ways. So and, you know, and there's other ways to do that. People say, OK, you can use canonical to kind of get over that. But parameter normalization through the ignore URL parameters functionality is really the quickest and most efficient way to get rid of that stuff. It's more efficient in two ways, because it's used really upstream by our crawler. So even our crawler kind of just looks at them. And if they know that session ID or you know, tracking code or um, whatever the tracking codes are, um, it should be ignored. Then basically, it doesn't have to go and crawl 
uh, your pages twice, and it just it just it will you know equal and equate them to each other, and that's really beneficial both from a bandwidth perspective. That helps us you know save bandwidth, helps your site save bandwidth, and it helps consolidate all that URL juice into that single URL. So. We also try to kind of come up with some good uh, proposed parameters. When we crawl the web, we kind of make some best efforts to kind of guess which ones are uh, not kind of significant to your, uh, to your content. So you can look at those. Always make your own judgments, but we try to do a good job. And if you, once you click on them, they will be submitted. And basically, within one day, we will start to drop kind of those parameters from the URLs in the SERP. Yeah. Crawl speed, another really important tool. We really allow you to set crawl speed on an hourly basis. Right? So when Bingbot comes, it kind of has a baseline rate. It, it comes in and says, oh, based on this site's traffic, we will crawl you one, you know, one page per second or one page every five seconds. But you can still influence this and make sure that we do not come and crawl you heavily during hours of your key hours of operation. So we will always kind of respect that we load these files. And every hour, we look at your crawl settings and kind of balance out how we crawl the site. I'm, and it was mentioned briefly this morning, the HTTP protocol. We still have to be polite. And politeness is really the key factor for, for our crawlers. And the, the most difficult thing to really solve. But we let you help. You know, we will help you with this feature to kind of help us kind of you know, ease in and out uh, as your site is kind of visited more prominently during the day. So we have some presets that you can say, OK, between 9 and 5 AM, you set it up, you save it, and we store it. So during night, the hours, we'll come and crawl you more. And when your visitors are there, we'll, we'll come in and, and, and crawl you less. So this is a really unique feature. It's an hour by hour uh, crawl speed. Much more preferable than any kind of crawl delay or stuff like that in your robots.txt, which we see happen so many times on big sites that have crawl delays that are 30 seconds, so one page per 30 seconds, but they have 10 million pages. So if you do a quick back of the envelope calculation, if it's one per second, we can do 86,000 pages a day. So for a one million page site, it would take us 20 days just to see, you know, keep up with, with, with the, the, the current um, um, size of the web. So this is a much better way to do. Use crawl delay only if there's some, something really bad happening and you're getting hammered and you want to temporarily kind of uh, back us off, all right? So those are all these great inputs that you can only give inside Webmaster Tools, and they're going to be essential. Um, so make sure you, you, you know when it needs to happen that it happens. There's also other stuff. We give you stuff back, other than you know, just allowing you to, to tell us about your site. We give you some data back directly from our back end. So we have a whole kind of reporting um, uh, uh, you know, section where we tell you about, oh, here's the, how many pages we had in our index over time. Here's how many impressions they had. Here's how many pages we crawled. So these are really interesting things to, to keep looking at uh, and to see if that's kind of meeting your expectation or there, there's room for optimization, OK? So um, and then, again, we also provide you direct from our back ends, uh, page traffic, what are your top pages in search in all of these places, so Bing, Yahoo, et cetera, um, and you know, how many clicks are you getting, what, is, what are the impressions, uh, and you can even drill down to, into that deeper and see, oh, you know, and these are the keywords that are generating that traffic. And we also have the flip side. We do, you know, keyword to, to pages and get really deep into that and really just analyze some of those things. Maybe not as deep as, you know, we don't allow, like, setting up campaigns or keyword portfolios and stuff like that. But these are really just some interesting things you may have never seen in any of the other places that you're looking for for your SEO strategy. So check it out. Um, you know, we can really dig in deep. And I think this is from Dwayne's site. His Jeep's uh, uh, site, so you know, it doesn't look like he's doing too well these days. But and link information, very important, still in a huge factor in, in in all things. If you think about ranking in search engines, don't just think about ranking in the SERP. It's also ranking to get indexed because the internet is huge. WW is trillions and trillions. We probably know about 20, 30, 40 trillion URLs on the planet, and we need to kind of size that down to an index that serves all of these uh, uh, user experiences. So you know, ranking is really you know, done at all kinds of, some things just don't make the cut. But links is an important kind of popularity signal still. So we'll tell you a lot about you know, what the, the links are that we see for your website. And we, you, you, you can uh, export a lot of this information, kind of do some pivots on it, 
uh, we will allow you to download a mil up to a million links and analyze them in, let's say, Excel. Uh, and up to 20 million, uh, sorry, 20,000 per pay individual page, okay? So go, in, go out and check that out. Um, probably quite comprehensive. I've heard from some people it's one of the most comprehensive places to go for inbound link information, especially if it's for free, right? Okay. And then you can also do a little bit of competitive link analysis. Nothing to the same extent as other tools might, might do, but you know, this is a great way to kind of quickly see, oh, my competitor has links from X, Y, and Z. So really kind of old style site explorer that, that was in Yahoo is right there in the Bing Webmaster tools. Uh, and you can look at you know, internal links and external links and get some information right from the Bing index. So that's kind of cool. All right. And I'm, Nearly done, but there's some more indispensable tools other than these ones here that um, you know, help you with, uh, with, with your SEO strategies and, and be successful. One of the things that we introduced last year is something called, we call it SEO Analyzer. I think it still has a beta tag on it, but it's pretty much stable. And you can really just get all of the, uh, the usual uh, SEO recommendations. And I think we use about 15 in, in, in Bing currently. We don't want to get too confusing about your pages. You type in the URL of your page, and we analyze it right then and there on the spot. And we also you know, do this regularly and crawl all of your pages and show you, you know, uh, SEO um, recommendation reports for all of your pages. But you can quickly go in. You can type in your URL from your site, uh, you know, click submit it, and we will say, OK, the H1 tag is missing, or it's too short, the title is there. And, and what's more, we will actually allow you to kind of di dive into the page source of that particular page. And when, when we can, we will highlight the position right there in the HTML source uh, that has the issue. So, and you can just move up and down with those little arrows. And whop, you will see right there the image is missing, like alt text or stuff like that. So that's really helpful and just quickly pinpointing some issues on your, on, on your site. We also show you if there's redirects, if there's like a redirect loop, and we'll show you wh where the redirect is going, OK? And then, you know, it gets a little bit more geeky, but sometimes you want to know, what is Bingbot really seeing when they come to my site? Uh, and there's many, 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 many um, cases where we try to crawl a site and we see completely different HTML as a normal user does. And sometimes that is really by accident, or sometimes that is, you know, there is some, some, something wrong. In some cases, sites get hacked, uh, and all of a sudden in Bing, it looks like you're selling Viagra or other pharmaceuticals. Whereas you're really talking about, let's say, agile programming um, uh, technologies. Um, and you would never know. When you go to the page, it looks brilliant. When Bingbot sees it, it's all kind of plastered with uh, illegal eggs because hacking happens. So this is a really good way to kind of check out whether the responses that we're seeing are the same or similar to what you are seeing in, let's say, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, et cetera, PP. Uh, and we, we showed this, the, the server response there as well. So. You know, if you see a 403, which we see a lot, that we're forbidden to crawl your web. So, you know, mod security on Apache is probably blocking us for some reason. So there's more geeky details, but that's the kind of stuff you really want to see. We have a lot of sites that just do not allow us to crawl, and they have no idea that's the case. It might be the ISP doing it for people. It might be your tech department doing it. You don't know. With this one, with one click, you know what's going on. And then the dreaded malware. A big problem. Malware is mostly, again, uh, not because uh, people are putting malware on their sites. It's mostly because people get hacked and people inject stuff on their site. And sometimes it might be a small little uh, WordPress module or something that you've added uh, to, to, to really do something nice with your site, and somebody's gone in and hacked it. Uh, and we will report this. And the only way to get rid of this really is not, it's about completely removing all that stuff, understanding what's going on, and uh, file a reevaluation request with Bing. So that, that you can only do in the Bing Webmaster tools. Uh, and it will, you know, it will take some time for us to trust that you've done due diligence, because we see a huge amount of sites that clean up get reinfected with a very short time. Uh, and that's really painful, because we will not de-index you, but we will show the users that the link may be uh, you know, a potential threat. And that will, you know, people will kind of go away and say, OK, I'm not going to click on this website. So, that could really tank your, um, your traffic very quickly. And another tool that we recently introduced is, you know, 
you have a site, you finally get the domain name you wanted, and now you have to move and you want to make sure that we follow and that all that SEO juice is kind of pertained. Uh, in Webmaster Tools, you can actually tell us about such moves. Normally, we will pick this up organically, but it can take a while. Uh, and this one kind of expedites how we see moves. Uh, and you can do this not just from domain to domain, but uh, having been an in-house SEO with you know, big sites, and we do a lot of re-architecture and moving folders around and moving stuff around, you can also tell us about site within site moves. If it's like a substantial, you know, like 10,000 pages go from here to here on the same site, you can tell us too, as long as uh, it, you've verified that site. And finally, alerts and notifications. I think this is really the top reason you want to be in the Webmaster Tools. That is to get notified about issues that are going on. Crawl error alerts. We see server errors spiking all of a sudden. When we see like an increase that's 10% more than the day before, the last couple of crawl cycles, we will tell you. And then you might be the, the, the SEO person or the search marketer is actually the one that saves, hey, listen, there's something wrong with our servers, you know, and go talk to your ops folks and fix it. Um, or you know issues that we see with robots.txt, uh, malware alerts, yeah, and we forward these. You you get these in message in the message center, so you can always read them there and archive them there. But we will forward them to you to your favorite email address. So that's that's really important stuff. Without those, uh, you know, the, the chances of you like understanding that all of a sudden Bingbot has been blocked by your ISP or by your own tech department for whatever firewall software that they just installed. Uh, you, you know, it would take you weeks to find out otherwise, okay? So, quick recap. Bing is a lot more than Bing.com. I think we've established that. There's a lot more places where we use the Bing index to, uh, to drive search experiences. And, uh, and uh, you know, we've seen the web search and the, the, the knowledge graph. And, you know, and there's, if you go to Bing.com, especially in the U.S., you have the social graph in there as well. And then the Webmaster Tools are really the place to provide us with detailed information about your site sitemaps, submit stuff. Um, tell us which parameters are safe to ignore yeah, so that we don't have to guess. Um, and, and you know, help us with crawl speed. If we're kind of doing, you want, we want to do right by you and get the right crawl speeds in there. It's also the place where you can get additional information. Yeah, and we showed some, some of that. You get page traffic, you get search, you get um, keywords, and you can you kind of drill down deeper into that. And then there's the, the tools that you, you, you will need you know, if, the, if you're debugging issues. SEO issues like H1 tags, titles, short descriptions. Help us find, you know, we'll help you find that stuff. Malware, site move, and finally, the alerts that you will be getting on a daily basis or you know, as things uh, happen on your site. So these are really compelling reasons to you know, go back in your organization, talk to people, make sure you have your webmaster tools. And uh, luckily, a lot of people have. Uh, and make sure that you, you always know and that always people around to be able to come into that uh, tool and, and fix some of these issues or find out about you know, the alerts and notifications that we send you. On that note, uh, I'm happy to take questions afterwards or now or whatever uh, Paul says is the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, and um, I will hand it over to uh, Paul and Mel. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you.